pages should the CV be? Should I add a photo of myself? Is there any special format? How can you make your CV personalized? to the airline that you're applying for. So join with me today to see exactly how to build a great cabin crew CV. Hey guys, it's me Ara again and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be doing one of the most requested and relevant videos these days which is how to make a great cabin crew CV obviously a lot of airlines are hiring these days or at least collecting their CVs as a show of interest so if you guys go on Google and do a quick Google search you're going to come up with thousands of great CV formats it's not actually that hard to find a good CV format with a simple Google search. And just about any of these formats out there will work. So I'm not going to give you guys a fixed CV format today. Plus, that will be kind of silly when all of you guys out there make the same format CV and send them to the same airline. So what I'm going to do is give you guys some good tips on how to make a great cabin crew CV. So hit that subscribe button and let's get started. Number one, photo. Now I get asked this one a lot. Do you need to put a photo in your cabin crew CV? And what type of photo should you put? Yes, you absolutely need to put a photo in your cabin crew CV and please do not put a full length photo. It should be a passport type photo with a white or light colored background. But unlike a passport photo, the one difference is you should have a nice genuine smile on your photo for your cabin crew CV. Also, it's really, really good if you can dress up in professional attire. So both for ladies and gents, if you can wear a suit or at least get the coat, that would be good. For the gents, you need to wear a tie. Also, please follow the airline's grooming standards when you're taking that photo. So ladies, please try to match the makeup and the hairstyle of the airline that you're applying for. And gents, it's best if you take a photo with a clean shaven face. Yes, I've told you this in a previous video as well. It's always, always good for you to show yourself in that airline's grooming standards and makeup and hairstyles. It just gives that person that's looking at your CV a good impression of what you might look like in their uniform. And it's best to keep your photo in the top corner next to your contact details. Guys, there's a lot of websites out there that you can use to make a good CV or there's a lot of applications or software as well to make a good CV. I usually use just Microsoft Word. It's more than capable and more than enough to make a great cabin crew CV. The text that you put in your CV Try to stick to one font style, maximum two. Don't put any fancy fonts. However, you can make your font bold in places that you need. But please, choose a simple, crisp and clean font style. How long should your CV be? Don't be surprised, but one page is actually enough. Especially if you don't have any work experience, one page is absolutely enough. Two pages is okay. Do not make your CV more than two pages. Guys, do not be scared that your CV is limited to one page. It's absolutely acceptable. It's actually better to have a crisp and clean one page CV than to have a shabby and unstructured two page CV. So guys, airlines are big companies and especially if you're applying for a cabin crew position, the airlines usually get thousands if not 
tens of thousands of applications. It's not like a normal job hiring process where you have a few or maybe a maximum of a couple of hundred applications and a recruiter will personally go through each CV. Airlines don't work like that, especially in the cabin crew positions. Tens of thousands of people apply for a very few spots. So instead of your CV going to the hands of the recruiter directly, now it's going to go through a computerized filtration system. That is a ATS scanner, an application tracking system. So you have to keep your CV simple and clean. Don't make your CV too fancy because otherwise the ATS scanner cannot read your application correctly. Also, you need to put the correct keywords and headings. But having a clean and simple CV doesn't mean your CV has to be black and white and boring. Now, you still can add a little bit of color and customize your CV to stand out. Let me give you a tip that I learned a long, long time ago. I don't know where I learned this, but I learned this a long, long time ago. Your CV should be customized to the company that you're sending it to. If you didn't know that before, please know that you should. And one of the best ways to customize your CV to the company that you're applying for is to use that company's color code. That's right, use that company's colors. So a lot of you guys applied for Qatar, right? A really good way to make sure that your CV stands out and to show that you're deeply interested in that company is to go and use their two colors in your CV. If you do a quick Google search, you will find any airline or any company's color codes. Now, there's hundreds of formats and ways that you can use these colors in your CV. So I'm not going to give you guys a fixed format, but I will give you a few examples. Like this. Or this. Or this. But you do need to be careful sometimes of how you use these colors. Look at Emirates colors, for example. It's red and white. So you need to be careful about how you use Emirates theme colors in your CV. You don't want your CV to look like bloody murder. Uh -huh. So be careful and thoughtful on how you use those company colors. But it really adds value and thoughtfulness to your CV. Once your CV passes the ATS filtration and a actual recruiter gets your CV, they will be impressed by the personalized touch and see just how keen you are to get this job in this company. But again, keep it simple and keep it clean and don't overdo those colors. Now guys, don't start panicking thinking, oh my God, in the application that I sent to Qatar or this or Emirates, I didn't do this, I didn't use their colors and I need to change it. Don't worry guys. Usually the recruitment process takes a few stages and through those stages, you will have a chance to upload your CV again. You will get a chance to re-upload your CV in the Qatar profile as well, as well as if you guys did send your CVs to the Emirates Registration of Interest, you can always go back to your profile and re-upload your CV. So don't panic guys, you will get plenty of chances to update your CV. The CV format. Guys, please do not put really long paragraphs or really long sentences in your CV. Keep it short and to the point. Even after the ATS filtration, a recruiter will still handle hundreds of CVs and they don't have time to go reading Shakespeare sonnets. So keep it short and to the point. 
your CV should be easy to navigate and find the information. And also, add relevant headings to divide your CV. There should be an objective or a personal statement. This is where you talk briefly about yourself and your ambition. But guys, again, keep it short. This should be the only place in your CV where you're writing a paragraph. Everywhere else in your CV should be in point form. Work experience. Please list all and any of your work experience. Starting from your current or most recent work experience to the oldest. Any job experience that you have, just put it in your CV. It doesn't matter if it's not relevant to customer service. A lot of you guys keep asking me that you don't have customer service experience. It's fine. Whatever experience that you have, just put it in your CV. Even if you did a part-time job, still list that in your CV. If you were just freelancing, that's also okay. Please list that in your work experience as well. Whether it's a part-time job or freelancing that you did, make sure to put the dates. When did you start and up till when? And under each of those job titles, please briefly mention your roles and responsibilities or the projects that you handled. Educational qualifications. Again, guys, please list your current or most recent educational qualification to your oldest. Guys, if you have two, three diplomas, a couple of bachelors and a master's degree, you don't need to go and put your O-level results or mid-school results in there as well. There's simply no need. However, if you do only have your advanced level and ordinary level results, if you only have up till your high school education, then yes, you can go into more detail with those levels. Skills. List down all and any kind of skill that you have that you think will be relevant to the cabin crew job. Guys, if you have any kind of specialized training, let's say you have some kind of medical background, or at least you did some kind of first aid course, then that's a really good thing that you can include in your cabin crew CV. I've told you guys this before, any kind of medical training, security training, any kind of that type of training is a real good plus when applying for a cabin crew job. So make sure to list those skills as well. But guys, please remember to list everything with the relevant dates of the training. Also, if you guys have particular accomplishments or certificates from those trainings, please list those things as well. Sports skills. Yes, it's actually a good idea to list your sports skills in a cabin crew CV, especially if you've done swimming or any type of martial arts for sports. Both of these sports categories come in handy when you're applying for a cabin crew job. Language skills, very important. Definitely list down all the languages that you're fluent in. And if it's only English, that's absolutely fine. English is all you need. Hobbies and interests and extracurricular activities. This section is not compulsory. But you can add this if you think that you have something relevant to the cabin crew job. For example, if you've done any type of volunteering or event organizing, those are really good things to list in this section. So guys, there you go. A lot of you guys, a lot of you guys have asked me 
what to put in the cabin crew CV. Should we put this? Should we put that? What can I do? Can you show me a format? And there you go. I've given you guys some great tips on what to put on your cabin crew CV. I can't show you guys word for word or give you guys a fixed format because that look a little bit silly when all of you guys use the same format. Plus, you gotta do some work by yourself. But I really hope that all of these tips were really helpful for you guys to make a great cabin crew CV. So, as always, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below and I will get back to you with answers. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you again in another episode of Aura in the Clouds.